But before we ask that question, I want to ask, or I want to start, I suppose, with some very chilling words that could cause havoc in this room, I'm afraid. Uh -oh. For anyone who hasn't got their mobile phone turned off. Siri, Alexa, OK Google, turn the lights off, play some cheesy music, turn the heating up. Order me 500 tins of dog food for delivery tomorrow, please. So apologies if you have any parcels when you get home tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, more seriously, what can we do with these voice assistants within libraries? So I'm going to look very quickly over the six minutes at sort of the technology behind it, how we might use it within libraries, and just a few challenges and questions as we sort of look into the world of voice interfaces. So, well, why are we talking about this? So anyone here who has a smartphone, which I'd bet is 98% of you, you already have a voice assistant on that, whether it's Alexa, Google, um, Siri, and so forth. Those companies are trying to get these in pretty much every room in your house, and they're selling by the millions right now. So my literature search, as you could call it, let's search for skills within um, Alexa. So in the same way as you can install apps on your mobile phone, you can install skills on your voice assistant. You search for library and you get these sorts of things, sort of Harry Potter skills, ambient library sounds and so forth, but there aren't really any libraries using these yet. So we've set up um, a trial with the National Library of Scotland to do this. Now, like all good technology, the bit that you think is hard is actually quite easy, all the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, um, and the bit that should be easy, which is how do we use this, is actually the harder bit. So I thought we'll get technical just for a few slides and actually show you how easy it is um, to build these things. So the very first step of building one of these skills is its invocation name. So what is it you actually say to your device to um, launch this? So if you want to order a taxi, it'd be Uber. Um, if you want to order a pizza, you know, Alexa, please order me a, a Domino's. So for us, it's as simple as National Library of Scotland. Then once you have your invocation name, you have to define what are known as intents. So these are the things that you might actually want to have a dialogue with your device about. You know, how do I join the library? What are the opening hours? And then for each one, you simply put in what they call sample utterances. So these are the types of things that you might say to get into that dialogue with your device. And that is as hard, really, as the machine learning and the voice recognition is. Now, for some intents, you may require extra bits of information. So something like opening hours, well, you need to know which library uh, are they interested in and on which date. So you can actually define what they call slots. So within the things they say, you want Alexa to look out for those slots. What's the library they're saying uh, they're requesting the opening hours for and on which, which day? And then again, in this case, if they don't tell you a library, you sort of want to prompt for that because, you know, National Library of Scotland, we have at least three libraries, so which, which one is it you require? So you can tell Alexa, well, if they didn't specify a library, you know, go back and ask them for that. Again, it's very easy to um, do sort of entity resolution through this. Um, you can sort of teach Alexa your different libraries that you have, in this case, what they might be called, sort of synonyms for them. So again, if somebody responds with something that's a bit like your library name, but not quite, it will actually be able to match it anyway. Um, so it sort of gives the appearance of being intelligent. Step five, you've got the information, you know, you know what the user's asking of your device, um, and you simply sort of tell it really what you want it to say back in return. So in this case, you know, please speak, National Library of Scotland is open, blah, blah, blah. And then again, you can sort of put it into listening mode and say, there's the information, can I help you with anything else today? Final step, you put it through publication and certification. Chances are you'll fail that first time. They do test your apps quite strictly. Um, you, you take that feedback, you improve your skill, you'll then get it, um, it'll pass the certification, and then your skill is published. Um, I'm too wimpy to give a live demo, so Alexa, instead... Ask the National Library of Scotland, how do I join the library? I'm glad you're interested in joining the National Library of Scotland. To register, please visit www.nls.uk and click on the register button in the top right-hand corner. We look forward to welcoming you soon. And so we ha now have that skill which you can install on your Alexa devices um, and sort of interact with the library. We have the new generation of devices that are coming out now which have screens on and these are very nice as well, certainly with the user testing that we found when it does come to things like opening hours, you just can't process in your head those opening hours as it's being read out, but actually if you can put a picture up, that's much better. So you're probably all saying, hmm, impressive, very nice. 
but actually what's the point? And so that's the good question. We need to work out, well, what are those use cases where people will actually want to, in a sense, talk to the library? You don't sit down and sort of have a serious, you know, one hour conversation with Alexa. It's those things that just come to mind when you're eating your Weetabix in the morning. So what might those use cases be? So things like, when are my library books due back, might be a good one. Is the library busy right now? Should I get out of my pajamas and actually get onto campus? Please renew my books. Or an even more complex one, are there any available copies of the books from my reading list in the library this week? Now you'll have noticed, obviously, from the text below, this, these are the sort of reasons why all the systems you've been buying recently, you've always specified that they have APIs so that we can actually start interrogating them to get more um, information from them. But of course, hard problems remain hard. Discovery, what happens if you ask what papers are there about tidal power and Alexa comes back, here's search result one of 15 million. It's not going to be much use. So it's sort of working out how we can do that type of thing instead. The sort of things we need to learn, should we have um, recorded human voices re responding instead of the simulated voice? How do we actually prototype and design um, voice user inter interfaces? It's quite a different um, skill. And then could we, for example, make use of their ability to understand and speak back in different languages, in sort of non-English languages? Do we develop for all the different platforms? A bit like when we're developing mobiles, do we do for both for Apple and um, Android? And also, you know, these, these devices appear smart. Users expect them to be smart because they sound like they're being smart and understanding this, but actually, as you've seen from how you program these, they're not really that smart. They're just looking for keywords and responding to them. But anyway, um, I'm pretty sure these things are going to take off. Um, libraries will be sort of grappling with this over the next coming years. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next year, I guess, back at the conference of seeing what you've built with your voice devices. Thank you.